At the time of lunar landing, the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft will be roughly about 100 kilometers above the moon's surface and thereafter in a phased manner, it will reduce its velocity and altitude and come down and land. To tell us about the complexities of this process and how ISRO will handle it, we have with us uh, Dr. Shankaran, the director of India's UR Rao Satellite Center, the center which built the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft. So please tell us, from 100 kilometers above the moon to landing, how, we, uh, how are we doing it? So at the time of uh, the lander separating from the propulsion module, we will be in a 100 by 100 kilometer uh, orbit. Now, many systems that have to be used, that have to work for landing, are going to be um, exercised for the first time at that point. So, uh, what we have planned is that we are going to be there uh, in, that, in that phase, in the orbital phase for about 4-5 days. So, what we will do is we will start testing one by one. The, the equipment. For example, there are four throttleable 800 Newton engines which are going to do the actually the uh, velocity reduction of the lander. So we will be testing these four engines in uh, one, at, one at a time and as a pair and also in the profile how it has to fire in the uh, at the time of landing. This will be done, this will be testing will be done and there are certain sensors which are there. So what we will do is we will orient these sensors on the lander towards the uh, the propulsion module and get a reflection back from it so that we make sure that the sensors work uh, because though we have tested all of them on the ground once in, in space this will be in orbit once we test before we uh, convince ourselves everything is all right and we can go for la landing so during this process of thruster uh, uh, testing the 100 kilometer by uh, 100 kilometer orbit would have reduced to 100 kilometer by 30 kilometer. So that is the orbit will be remaining for about four days, where without any disturbance to the uh, the orbit of the lander, will be determining what is the accurate orbit. We have to know this very accurately because. Um, if the accuracy is more, uh, worse than 50 meters, then landing is not going to be possible. It has to be accuracy has to be very, 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 very precise determination has to be done. And once this is done, when we start the descent, the engines are going to be fired. These four 800 Newton throttleable engines are going to be fired, which will initially give a velocity so that the from the orbit, the lander gets removed from the orbit and goes on a uh, trajectory towards the moon's surface. So the velocity from couple of kilometers per second, uh, we have to now reduce it to zero. There are two components, one vertical component and horizontal component. So both the components of velocity will be reduced using these uh, four throttleable 800 Newton engines. As And uh, this, this process is going to take uh, nearly about uh, 30 minutes total. So this um, entire landing is divided into four four segments. The first segment is the rough braking, where maximum velocity of the lander will be killed, and we will be moving close towards our landing point, which is at uh, close to about uh, 70 degree uh, latitude on the moon. So during this phase, the main work is to maintain the orientation of the lander correctly and kill as much of the velocity as possible. So that will be done. At the end of this phase, we are supposed to uh, uh, go reach what is known as the attitude hold phase. This is the phase where our uh, altimeters, which determine what what is the height from the surface of uh, moon, are there. These are the altimeters will start giving output because you cannot measure from 30 kilometers the height. The, it is too too um, too much height the resolution will be poor so we will at this point will be around 7.3 kilometers at around 7.3 kilometer onwards we will be looking at the um, height from the ground because it is not just only a flat uh, spherical body it is full of mountains and valleys moon is full of mountains and valleys so if you take the average uh, um, uh, height like our we see we call mean sea level in earth you no know, like that if you take take the mean lunar level you are likely to go and crash uh, because one, 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 two, one to two kilometers tall mountains are there. So this is the first uh, major exercise of a sensor coming in loop. So once we get the data about the height uh, of the craft, then we can, uh, the software which is guiding the craft will make necessary uh, correction so that we will target to reach 800 meter above the uh, lunar surface. 
so that is the th this phase where we are moving from uh, this 7.3 kilometers to 800 meters is called the uh, fine breaking phase so we have the rough breaking phase we had the attitude hold phase where we measured the uh, altitude and then we are going the uh, fine breaking phase where we will be reaching up to 800 meters at that time there are velocity measurement cameras uh, and as well as, well as a laser doppler velocity meter there they will give what is the velocity of the craft in both all the three axes so the, using that data the velocity of uh, the lander will be reduced to zero in both horizontal and vertical direction so that the lander hovers over our targeted area of landing at that point when we reach this point we identify that we have reached the right location for this we have captured the entire area image using our chandrayaan 2 orbiters high resolution images where uh, about 25 centimeter uh, uh, resolution images are uh, taken by chandrayaan 2 orbiter that data will be used to confirm that where we are exactly over the lunar surface and once we confirm that we are at the right place we will start the vertical descent that is the final phase where the velocity will be slightly increased because we are already hovering no velocity is there so we will give a slight increase in velocity so that it starts falling down and we control the rate in which the lander is coming towards the lunar surface so that at touchdown we will be reaching with a velocity of about 1 meter per second the lander craft is designed uh, for uh, sustaining up to 3 meter per second velocity so we have targeted to uh, come down and touch down at about 1 meter per velocity in case during this process if you find that we are not exactly at the point where we want to uh, land then we will reorient the uh, lander move so if you find another 200 meters we have to move move the lander horizontally on that 200 meters again make it vertical and land that is the process so uh, when it comes to uh, our lander and rover so we have pragyan and vikram what is the design life of them and uh, what are they expected to do on the lunar surface see the mission life is one lunar day that is 14 days uh, because the both lander and uh, rover are depending upon the solar energy for uh, for its working uh, the the choice of our landing uh, location is also based on this that we have continuous 14 days of sunlight available uh, so that the 14 days mission is there where if you want to go beyond the 14 days you need another source of energy which typically generally will be a radi radioactive uh, a material based power system which currently we do not have that is why this mission is designed for a single uh, one lunar day which is 14 days uh, mission so the systems are likely to work longer but because we will not have power for next 14 days the mission is unlikely to uh, survive beyond this because battery cannot support very long though we are we are hoping that after the 14 days of uh, night it will come back but it is not assured because uh, all systems will go to a very low temperature minus 150 degrees centigrade that kind of temperature which is far beyond the survival uh, limit of many of the material used in the lander craft so by design it is 14 days but if you are lucky we make it longer so what are the kind of intense testing you did over several years to master lunar landing and ensure that chandrayaan 3 uh, you know imp uh, improves uh, our chances of landing see we had uh, done three major uh, hardware test campaigns um, i will come to the software subsequently the hardware test we have one what is called as a cold test where the all the sensor and electronics of uh, chandrayaan lander were put in a heli helicopter and we made sure that all the sensors work we simulated in our chitradurga campus the surface uh, of uh, lun uh, lunar surface by craters and putting some boulders all those things the features were simulated on ground and the helicopter was made to fly over that region with the expected uh, altitude and velocity not we cannot fully simulate the velocity because when we start the landing it will be a very high velocity but in the terminal phase whatever velocities are there those velocities were simulated to ensure that the uh, the all the sensors electronics and software all work together this is one test second is what is uh, called as the integrated hot test where along with all these sensors and electronics the four uh, 800 newton engines and the uh, 16 uh, 58 newton thrusters were also included 
and we did this test in our Sriharikota campus where using a tower crane we lifted this whole module we simulated a, a, a module similar to Chandrayaan 2 3 lander and uh, we made sure that the gravity and mass because you know in moon the gravity is one sixth of that of earth so we had to do the required compensation for that so this system was taken up and using the onboard engines and thrusters we were holding the uh, the uh, craft on uh, in space and ensured that all sensors electronics everything work this is a very important test this gave a lot of confidence that our systems are going to work in the actual operating conditions. The third test is the, uh, the lander leg characterization test. You know, as we also, it is going to come and uh, with an impact load, it is going to land on the lunar surface. So the lunar leg, the lander leg also has been uh, strengthened to survive. Uh, Originally in Chandrayaan 2, it was 2 meters per second was the limit. This time 3 meters per second is the limit for this uh, uh, leg. So we have simulated several uh, conditions like a soft surface, hard surface, slanting surface, one leg only making contact, two legs making contact, like that various uh, tests have been done to characterize our uh, lander leg mechanism successfully. In addition, we have done maybe hundreds and thousands of software level test simulations to go through the entire trajectory and the, the descent profile and varied all possible parameters up to six times the expected variation and it made sure that our uh, systems and the software does not misbehave any of uh, in under any of the conditions even unforeseen conditions it does not uh, misbehave Sir, what are the kind of uh, experiments that we expect from the lander and rover to perform on the moon what kind of science is expected to emerge from this uh, in uh, rover there are uh, two uh, scientific experiments and uh, and a camera navigation camera is there these both these scientific experiments are for finding out the composition of the uh, lunar soil it is uh, the one is a x-ray based system other is a, uh, a direct physical measurement these are going to uh, measure about the material property of the lunar material which is on the lunar surface whereas in uh, in the lander we have a couple of experiments where we are going to study if there are going to there are moon quakes like earthquakes whether moon quakes are there uh, a probe will be inserted into the lunar surface to find out uh, about the moon moon quake already people have been uh, speculating about this 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 is going to be uh, done and of course a number of cameras are there in the lander so uh, when it comes to the mechanism of the rover coming out and you know traversing the lunar surface uh, what is it that we can expect and how far is it expected to travel during its life see we, uh, the rover is connected to the lander through the rf communication and uh, that is the only way of uh, communicating with the rover so it has to be within the direct line of sight radio visibility of lander we and also the time is limited to 13 days because we will be landing on day one that day nothing can be done uh, 13 days only are there in 13 days we expect about one kilometer away from uh, the landing site the rover will be able to move so lunar dust is a major challenge when conducting soft landing so what are we doing to counter that and uh, conduct a successful landing the design of the lander craft itself has been made in such a way that there are uh, no direct impact uh, due to uh, lunar dust except if some dust goes and settles on the solar panels of the lander. So what we have done is we have uh, made simulations and studies about what is the amount of dust that can get settled on the solar panel and we have made provision for that much loss in the power generation from the uh, solar panels. Whereas. Uh, uh, the rover is not expected to have any problem due to dust because once the landing is over, within few hours the dust is expected to settle down and the, the motion of the rover is not likely to uh, generate any dust. So we are looking at a couple of landing days, it's perhaps 23rd, 24th August is the initial and thereafter if at all it's delayed it should be one month later. What is the uh, logic behind this? See we are, uh, the plan currently is to land on 23rd August. And if for any reason we are not able to start our vertical descent on that day, three days later is the next opportunity, uh, 26th. That is, uh, if there are any malfunction of system, 
or for whatever reason there's a ground link um, uh, rf link has failed we are not able to send command to the lander these are the reasons where uh, we have to um, wait for 3 days for the next landing opportunity if we if you can't do that also theoretically the next opportunity is after 1 month because we have only 14 days light 14 days uh, darkness so we there's no point in landing during the darkness we have to land when the light is there theoretically after 1 month but after 1 month the um, track of the orbiter over moon is not going to be exactly identical so we will not be able to land on the same spot what we wanted to so this we are identifying how long we have to wait uh, to go f- uh, for landing if we don't uh, we are not able to land on the first two days that's how uh, so we are not at finalized how long we have to wait it may be, it will be longer than 1 month if we don't uh, do on the first two uh, opportunities we have to wait for more than a month you said uh, it will be uh, 70 degrees latitude uh, towards the south pole that we'll be landing so what is the science behind landing at that kind of a spot see the uh, first uh, requirement of any landing mission is that the terrain is uh, conducive for landing if if there is no uh, reasonably flat surface no landing is going to be uh, successful this is f- first one scientifically the uh, the south pole has always uh, Uh, was uh, interesting for scientists because that is the area where lot of permanently shadowed zones of uh, moon are there where it is expected that frozen water and signatures of moon's past life over the past several uh, billion years how moon has uh, uh, evolved secrets of uh, about that is expected to be there that is why uh, south pole uh, landing for moon is a very important uh, requirement so when it comes to the difference between chandrayaan 2 and chandrayaan 3 just give us a gist of what modifications we've made uh, basically the uh, we'll we'll talk about lander mainly uh, the lander more or less remains same only what we have uh, done is we have added for certain systems which we did not have redundancy in chandrayaan 2 we have added redundancy to chandrayaan 3 uh, uh, lander some systems redundancy has been given and we have loaded more fuel we have put a bigger fuel tank in uh, chandrayaan 3 and loaded more fuel so that we have more margins for the propulsion system and uh, in uh, the main change uh, is the chandrayaan 3 uh, has a direct velocity measurement uh, sensor available whereas in chandrayaan 2 uh, the velocity was determined indirectly a direct velocity lo- laser doppler velocity meter has been included and finally uh, the software uh, that is uh, there has been m- made very robust this time compared to chandrayaan 2 Mr. Shankaran the director of India's UR Rao satellite center speaking to Vion about uh, the detailed processes that go into a lunar soft landing and what the lander rover are expected to do once they reach the lunar surface from Bangalore Siddharth MP Vion World is one